We also, you know, fully still comply, fully complying with the directives and guidance of the government that we're subject to, again, looking at Romans 13, 1 and 4. Um, so along with that, you know, what, uh, again, we do know right, uh, it was May 23rd, I believe it was, that Governor Walls um, allowed churches to meet in person with larger numbers and higher percent and a 25 percent um, capacity. Um, we were looking at that um, and we also were looking at the 12 page PDF that came along with that from the Minnesota Department of Health as to what it looked like for churches to do that as safely as possible with the guidance that came along with that. And so we've been looking at guidance from the CDC, um, from again, Minnesota Department of Health, um, from local sources like uh, our own Mayo Clinic as to what best practices there are for larger groups to gather together indoors for longer periods of time and how we could try to do that. And this isn't uh, set in stone. We will continue to look at that guide guidance and you'll see in our chart that there's some places where uh, that guidance is going to be important and we will be open to adjusting our practices as new and more accurate data or additional guidance comes um, from those sources. We value, uh, have always valued uh, since uh, March 15th when we had our first uh, um, physically distant online service. We value keeping our congregation connected to each other. We have pri prioritized that and tried to do that as best as possible during um, these unique times. Uh, we've prioritized gathering people in small groups to live out the one another's most recently with our first announcement Memorial Day weekend of uh, you know, having the church available for groups up to 10. Um, and then also most recently, uh, about a week ago, a little over a week ago, that we upped that number up to 30. Um, but as we are seeking to facilitate and increase these connections, um, both virtually and now as it, um, as it um, becomes safer to do so face to face, you know, we're going to uh, seek to continually increase these connections and we're going to have differing ways to do that. Um, so as we're continuing on here, I will remind you that you can start posting questions in the Q&A button on the Zoom webinar at any time. You don't have to wait until the end of my presentation here to start posting questions. So we can get those queued up whenever you would like to post a question and we will come back to those. So if something prompts a question now, go ahead and, and put that in. Uh, we want to value and uh, uh, value want to preserve the unique blessings of God in this that we've learned in this pandemic. Um, our home-led worship has blessed us with a fresh sense of intimacy and authenticity. We don't want to lose that. Our separation has increased our desire to connect with each other, and we've heard that from a, a number of people. Um, our prayer times, those uh, Zoom prayer times that happened uh, regularly and, and other times of prayer have fostered a deeper dependence and reliance upon God. Um, I'll share that uh, we as a leadership board have um, begun in the last three months building stronger ha habits and deeper and more lengthy periods of, of prayer and uh, relying on God in, through that uh, method. Um, we've also learned that our online worship has shown us the importance of ministering to those not with us in person. So you'll see when we get to our chart here in a little bit, uh, we plan on having a a habit from this point forward to have an online worship experience for those who are not able to join us in person. And finally, we value our staff and volunteers and want to ensure that the burdens placed on them um, by the challenges of regathering together are manageable and sustainable. Um, so there are requirements of additional cleaning, sanitizing, how are we gonna ensure uh, physical or social distancing? And those were increase the demands on our staff and volunteers. Uh, we've also had conversations with all of our staff and also with starting with some of our volunteers of where are they at with their comfort level of coming back together in a hundred person or, you know, 
our such uh, in-person service. And we want to keep that in mind as everybody has uh, a different personal decision to make here and we want to value all of that. So again, those are a recap of the values that we've been using as a leadership to guide us and um, how they've even guided us in this most recent decision. So with that, uh, we do want to share uh, what our upcoming plans are for gathering together in more ways. Uh, so this is what our Calvary's regathering levels look like. Uh, again, just real briefly, uh, we're choosing the term regathering very specifically because um, we, uh, some use the term reopening. We don't feel that we as a church have ever closed. We've just been doing ministry in different ways. We've been leveraging an online service instead of an in-person service. And there's still been connections and ministry that's been happening with uh, small groups, whether they are small groups uh, meeting in people's backyards or lots of small groups and, and mini congregations and whatnot. And now our new C groups have been meeting whether in person or also via Zoom or other such things. So we are regathering together in more ways. So where we currently are here is what was announced about a week and a half ago. Um, that one effective on June 15th that are seed and small groups. Um, we now uh, will recommend those to gather together, encourage those to gather together up to uh, numbers of 30. Um, what, what is new and what we're specifically announcing is levels three and on here. And level three, we are um, going to be starting into this upcoming Sunday on July 5th, where we are going to be having an in-person worship service opportunity again uh, for the first time since March 15th. A couple of highlights here. Uh, we are going to cap attendance in each one of those services at 100 individuals. Um, and we are going to continue to offer, you'll see this green check mark all the way among, along for online worship service. We are going to continue to offer an online worship service. For this level three, that will still be the pre-recorded online worship service like we've become uh, accustomed to and have enjoyed um, participating along with over the last uh, three months or so. Um, we will have live preaching on. So some of you may have noticed in the letter that I sent out that I described this as a hybrid live pre-recorded service. So there are going to be elements that are going to be presented live in the sanctuary. One of those for sure uh, will be a, a live uh, sermon that will be delivered by whoever the pastor or speaker is on that Sunday morning. There will be other components that will be delivered live by somebody on our stage. Uh, the welcome, perhaps scripture reading. There will not be a live worship team. And so other components of this worship service during level three will be uh, played on our video screens that will come from the same online content that those that are worshiping from home will experience. This will be any of our worship songs will be presented this way along with maybe other content such as the intercessory congregational prayer may be played from the uh, online content. Um, other things is we are not opening any other Sunday uh, school or groups in level three. Uh, it will just be the two services that we will be doing. And we are also going to not be participating in any congregational singing as singing is one of the things that research is telling us is a um, very effective way to aerosolize um, expiration droplets and um, spread a virus amongst a very broad area up to 27 feet. Um, so with this 100 number and also for us, we will not be passing a friends and family folder. We are gonna be doing an RSVP. So I have some of that here. Um, mass, we do have a mass required service and I'll talk more about our mass statement. What are compelling data points of why we're in level, moving on to level three? Well, the governor has allowed churches to gather uh, in uh, larger numbers and there has not been any significant sustained COVID spike in Olmstead County and other Rochester churches have been meeting together for the last three or four weeks. Uh, without a major COVID outbreak in our community. And we are working with our volunteer teams that are willing to participate. So this is our very next level. Uh, we do have a lot of clarity about what we expect level four to look like. 
Uh, we are projecting that to be five weeks after level three started. So around August 19th, we may have to tweak that a little bit. We are going to up our numbers to 150, which is about maxed out in our sanctuary to allow six foot physical distancing is about 150 people, depending upon how well we put the Tetris puzzle together of groups of people in the appropriate places to allow that to happen. Um, we are gonna have um, online worship still. The difference here is that online worship is going to be live streamed from our sanctuary. So the entire service, including with a live worship team, is going to be presented from our sanctuary and it will be live streamed and still available to watch at later dates from that service in our sanctuary. Um, this level four starting August 9th is the earliest point that we would be offering other Sunday morning opportunities such as Sunday schools, many congregations. Now we're not guaranteeing that every Sunday school class is going to start right on August 9th. We need to work with those teams, which is why we have a question mark here too, is some of them may not start up for a while after August 9th as we work with volunteer teams and with each individual group as to whether they want to start working together. Um, again, at this point in time, we would have had four to five weeks of Calvary services without a major COVID outbreak, which would also be something that we'd be looking at. I think it's also to note down here on the bottom, this is not a one-way street. Um, we may be, we're going to be moving to level three this upcoming Sunday, and we're, God willing, planning to move to level four on August 9th. If we hit a large sustained COVID spike in uh, Olmstead County or other factors to play, we may find ourselves moving back to level three or even possibly level two if there was a, like a new stay-at-home order or anything like that. So th this could move both ways. Level five is really, really fuzzy for us. That is basically where we would add congregational singing. We would possibly add uh, early childhood or younger elementary classes. Um, again, we don't know when that would happen. The qualification for this would really be a relaxing from the CDC and Minnesota Department of Health as to what so physical distancing and and COVID response guidelines would, would really be um, loosened or, or pulled back from those um, best practices guidelines. And then level six, God willing, we'll get to there um, sometime in the not too distant future would be basically um, services as we um, are used to them being at Calvary. And something right there that may or may not happen until there is a uh, treatment or vaccine available readily in Olmstead County. So with that, some key items, again, an RSVP on our website and a link will go out uh, before the end of the day tomorrow with where the page on our website would be to RSVP for either our 9 a.m. or our 11 a.m. service. And I'll talk a little bit more about why that change in service time. Or you can also call the church service and if it isn't picked up, leave a message saying which one of those services you would like to attend. Uh, again, this is to project numbers and mark attendance because we will not be passing the friends and family folders. Sanctuary seating will be every other row and three seats between groups to have that physical distancing. We are going to go to a shorter 60 minute service at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. to try to provide a full hour in between those two two services to get people out of the sanctuary and out of the building and allow for some cleaning and disinfecting to happen. Um, we will be doing more active ushering in and out of the sanctuary um, to get people into the, the places in the sanctuary that fit for their group to allow for the most occupation. We will also be ushering out of the sanctuary from the back row to the front uh, to allow them not being bottlenecking in our hallways. Lingering over conversations is encouraged outside. Uh, we are gonna ask you to leave our building as promptly as possible, though if it is uh, inclement weather, we will make the gymnasium available on those mornings where it's uh, raining outside, for example, to where you could go into the gymnasium for those conversations. 
Uh, we're going to recommend you bring your own Bible, printed bulletin, notebook, and pens because at least initially those are going to be in the seat backs and we're not going to be passing out bulletins. Also, consider uh, families, consider bringing materials for their younger children uh, to, to stay in, um, you know, engaged. We know there'll be, uh, might be some interruptions and we love that. We want our whole families to be engaging. We also know there will be additional opportunities and needs for volunteering and serving. One that comes to mind is a team that will disinfect and wipe down common surfaces between the two services. So there might be some uh, uh, inquiries out for people to do that. And finally, please wear a mask. Uh, if you read my letter that I sent out on behalf of the board and the regathering working group, uh, this is our mask statement. Uh, please wear a mask. The wearing of face masks is one of the best ways that we can care for others in our church by helping prevent the spread of COVID-19. So we request that everyone age three and older wear a mask at all times while in the Calvary facility. If you are unable to wear a mask for extended periods of time, we would ask you to attend our 11 a.m. service. This would allow those in our church family that come to the 9 a.m. service to be confident that masks will always be worn at that service. Regardless of what service you attend, we would require that masks are worn whenever you are not in place within the sanctuary during the 11 a.m. service. So when you're coming into or out of the building or um, walking our halls to go to the restroom or anything like that, we would ask that you be wearing a mask at any service. The only time that the mask we would, um, if you cannot wear it for an extended period of time, to take it off is when you are in place in your physically distant location within the sanctuary. Again, Calvary leadership, we are convinced that wearing masks is a great way to care for others in our church family. And then finally, we want to announce that we are going to be starting um, July 10th, having a brand new connection opportunity for the Calvary Church family, and we're calling Gather Out, where we gather outside to connect. And they're going to be Friday nights at 6.30 at Calvary for between July 10th and uh, the end of August, um, where we're going to have singing, we're going to have prayer, we're going to have devo a short devotional time. Uh, we'd be asking families to be in socially or physically distant areas of the parking lot, and then actually the back uh, further out on the parking lot, we're actually would have cars parked there. We're going to have um, plan to have an FM transmitter there so that you could tune in and listen to that entire uh, opportunity on your FM radio in your car. Um, so again, a lot more details to come in that, but we're really, really excited about this uh, new connection opportunity for Calvary. So with that, that moves us into our question and answer time. So Chris, you're going to moderate that uh, question and answer time. So uh, where are we at on that? Thank you, Wayne. Um, there are two questions right now. And please, everybody, uh, anybody who's participating, if you have any questions, go ahead and type them in with the Q&A function that's uh, in Zoom. Um, we want to make sure we answer whatever questions you have. And if you're not comfortable asking the question in this setting, you can send the question to the leadership board via email or contact us, one of, the, one of us directly. Um, uh, there's a question about when we're able, to, we're, when we are going to be able to uh, get our ha hands on Tim's cinnamon, cinnamon rolls, uh, mm -hmm. when coffee connection will be restarting. Wayne? Um, we don't know exactly for sure. Definitely not in level three and probably not even in the beginning of level four. So level four is when we would start possibly having many congregations like Calvary Community or um, Encounter or you know upper elementary and youth Sunday school meeting. Um, as far as having the coffee where people are touching common surfaces uh, or whatnot, um, that would probably be later on uh, into level four or possibly even level five. Again, we will be looking at Minnesota Department Health guidelines of how um, any type of food like that could be served most safely um, with, within the current environment that we have. So that's still to be determined. Okay, great. 
And there's another question here, uh, the, the numbers that we list for the various uh, stages or phases of the opening, those numbers, is that the max per service or the max per day? That is per service. So the 100 for level three, that would be 100 capped at our 9 a.m. service and 100 capped at our 11 a.m. service. And then when we go to level four, where that's 150, that would be 150 for each service. Okay, thank you. There are no other questions right now, so we'll uh, give people an opportunity to ponder that. Uh, if anything else has come to mind. Um, uh, here we go. So uh, what would be the response if someone gets COVID that has been attending live services? We'll start with that. Okay, what we would be looking at doing is we would ask you to contact the church office. And then the church office will um, take a look at, you know, make some decisions along with input from our leadership, you know, what that exposure looked like. And we will either send out a, a church email notifying people or possibly depending upon if it was in a smaller group, um, specifically notifying individual people. Um, but we would, we would notify our church body and they could go about doing that. Um, as far as like the RSVP system, we do not plan on sharing our roster or anything with any governmental agencies. As we looked at how uh, contact tracing happens that would happen with the individual that tested positive and them actually calling out the people that were around them for more than 10 minutes at less than six feet distance. So um, with our services, you probably wouldn't necessarily even need to call out somebody that was in our service because uh, you would be further than six feet apart uh, for longer than 10 minutes. Um, there's a question here. Are we going to wear some kind of sticker to let people know if you're open to hugs or handshaking or not so that we don't need to ask? I presume that means with our level three opening. So we are recommending that we, um, at least here at level three, as we're just taking our first steps to regather back together, Jamie, um, that we would avoid that physical contact, that we would try to keep that six foot physical distancing and avoid those handshakes and hugs uh, as much as uh, many of us desire that um, because we, we just want to um, take things gradually and not have increased exposure. So we're asking that those be avoided uh, for the time being. Okay, good. And uh, there's a question about um, uh, enforcement. How will mask wearing and singing or not singing in the sanctuary be monitored and enforced in the services? It's a great question. So first of all, whenever you enter our, our sanctuary, which we're gonna be predominantly using door one, our, our main door. And also for those of us uh, you know, with uh, more mobility concerns, you can still enter under the overhang in door two we will be, when you come in saying, uh, do you have your mask? Uh, can you please put your mask on? If you don't, we will hand you one free of charge. And we will say, please wear this at any time that you are moving about our facility. Um, if it's 9 a.m. service, we're gonna say, please wear this at all times for the duration of the service. If it's 11 a.m. service, we would say, please wear this uh, at all times if you possibly can, but if you are unable to wear a, service, a mask for 60 minutes, once you are in the sanctuary in place, you can take that off. Um, as far as once you're in the service, uh, again, it'll just be um, kind of um, monitoring. And uh, maybe that's something that kind of the ushers or the worship leaders or us in leadership would do. And particularly in the 9 a.m. service, if there was somebody who just consistently was not wearing their mask, I would be having a conversation with them or somebody would to say, you know, maybe it'd be, it would be best for you. You need to come to the 11 a.m. service. And if you're singing out loud, we're just going to try to have a conversation with you and say, you know, the reasons why from a health perspective, we are asking us not that we, we want to still worship together, but to worship in our hearts, worship in our minds. In my letter, you would see language from Pastor Dan, that Dan Limkeman helped me with to say, there are other ways to worship other than singing out loud with um, gestures, with body position, with uh, just contemplatively 
listening to the songs. And so again, those would be individual conversations. Uh, so I want to give Pastor Tim a heads up that he'll be on deck for a question coming up here. There's a really tricky one that came in with his name attached to it, I think. Okay. Um, but how many do we normally come to services? And if we have a large response, would there be an option for people to overflow into another room? Okay, both good questions. We normally have been averaging between 250 to 300 in that neighborhood, eh, 200 to 300 in each one of our services. Um, over the last period. And when we've been taking a look at benchmarking from other community churches around us, um, this, this last month, it's been about 25% average attendance. And so we're not necessarily expecting that, uh, these numbers to get blown out of the water right away. Um, but Kathy, if uh, the RSVP blew these services out of the water, we would be looking at having um, overflow locations or eventually adding additional services other than the two that we just talked about. So those are things that we would agilely respond to. Okay. Uh, Tim, do you have an answer for that question? <laughs> uh, didn't Wayne just answer that question? Does, does nope. Tim take uh, does cinnamon Tim, roll answers? Does Tim take cinnamon roll orders? That's the question with your name on it. Oh, I didn't see. <laughs> well, you could always ask. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, we'll mark that one as answered. Um, so why are masks not required at both services all of the time? So we took a look at very hard this conversation of masks as, as a, a leadership board and, and we will and also chatted with the, the pastoral team and uh, we are convinced that masks, again, as I said earlier, are a great way to care for each other in our church family. And they do have a lot of impact on um, slowing and stopping the spread of the COVID-19 virus. Um, so we would like to ask everybody in the Calvary family to care for each other by wearing a mask at all times that you're in our facility. But we also wanted to understand that some people cannot or are unable uh, to wear a mask for 60 minutes at a time. And um, we also took a look at what level would be, we be willing to enforce. So we could have put out a statement that said we want masks worn at all times. But if we didn't actually enforce that to ask somebody to leave our building, we decided we did not want to do that. Um, Calvary and the Evangelical Free Church of America has a long-standing core value of really limiting the number of things that we would break fellowship over. And we did not think that this rose to that level. And so we were not comfortable if somebody said, I cannot wear a mask for 60 minutes, of asking them to then not join us in, in, in worship. And so then we said, if we didn't do that, eventually, I think, there would be both services would become mass optional. And there are people in our church body who would really want to and would most safely be able to, would want to attend a, a service where they are confident that the mass will be worn in that service. And so that's where we felt that we had, we needed to have some level of relaxing of that for our 11 a.m. service to say we could direct people that could not or were unable to wear a mask for a full 60 minutes to go to that 11 a.m. service so that we can make sure that that 9 a.m. service is mass required. Um, and Wayne, as long as we're on the topic of mask, then there's another question that popped in a little bit later about with one service essentially being mask optional. Um, is it fair to assume anyone ministering, ushering, volunteering would need to be comfortable being in that environment where someone may not be fully masked? Yep. Um, and again, I'm going to restate, we do not as leadership like the term mass optional. Right. Um, we are trying to raise the bar above this being a personal choice to this being something that you're unable or uh, cannot do. Um, but yes, we are talking about that with our volunteer team. So again, I'm actually pulling together the ushering team for this upcoming Sunday. And I will be having a conversation with those that will be ushering at the 11 a.m. service if they are comfortable with um, ushering, with having people in that service for you know 60 minutes in the sanctuary where they may not be wearing a mask for that entire 60 minutes. 
Um, and also, again, even at that 11 a.m. service, we are going to be asking everybody to wear their masks while they are in transit around our around our church facility. Oh, I love this question. Somebody is asking if we have any volunteer needs. Uh, and is there anybody, if do we need any extra hands uh, on board? Um, I think one of the things that comes off right now is um, it's new for us to be uh, disinfecting and wiping down large parts of our church facility uh, between services. So I think that'd be one right away if you wanted to contact uh, Tim or Joel or anybody, even just send an email to leadership board at calvaryfree.church. We could pass that on. We'd love to probably have people that'd be willing to spend uh, 30 minutes between the two services to wipe down um, and disinfect surfaces. Um, could be the ushering team. Um, I, as I mentioned, I'm gonna be trying to pull that together for this, this upcoming service. And um, again, uh, we would love to, to you know, possibly have that. Other than that, level three and gather outs. Gather outs are gonna happen. We don't know what those are gonna look like. So there may be some communication coming out as to how you could help set up, tear down, or do other things with the, the gather out um social activities that we would be having yeah i had one more Can I yeah. jump in with um we have been essentially in an empty building for three months and we are now regathering in our campus so i would also add to that if anyone over the next week prior to next sunday would like to spend a few hours on our campus getting it ready to go whether that's in cleaning or it's outside landscaping or other things you could contact either Joel Minchinson or me, and we would love to put you to work getting our place uh, looking nice for the 100 each service who will show up on Sunday. Great. Thank you, Tim. Um, there are two questions I think we could probably bundle together, and they have to do with uh, the arrival process. One question is, how do we handle somebody who, a visitor or someone who has not RSVP'd ahead of time? And then the second question is, are we checking temperatures and conducting a questionnaire, like basically, a, I assume this means a health questionnaire right. uh, at the entrance of the church? Great questions. I'm going to start with the second one last. We are not planning on for this service to be taking temperatures or conducting a questionnaire. Uh, we would ask that you do that yourself, that before you get in your car and drive to Calvary's church on Sunday morning, you do your own health assessment. Um, if you're at all sick and you have any concerns that, that, you know, that, that you're ill in any way and you take your own temperature, and I think uh, they're using a uh, hundred point four or something along those lines. I forget what the guideline is. Um, if it's higher than that, we would ask that you self-police that and you stay home and enjoy our participating in our worship online. Um, I think God's continuing to knit our church family together in the various ways that we have to worship together. And it's not going to just be in our church facility as we've seen for the last three and a half months. Um, so we'd ask you to police that, your, to police that, to to enforce that, to self-check yourself before, and every member of your family, um, which with uh, those with little kiddos, um, you know, maybe you do check everybody's temperature before you get into the minivan or, you know, that, that runny nose or that sniffle. You, you make a little more of a concern about that than you would have um, previously. And then as far as RSVPs and guests, we, you know, we know that guests may show up and um, we will accommodate them um, if they show up. And um, we don't expect a lot of people to be wanting in this environment to go to another church during this pandemic. But if, if guests show up, um, we will definitely welcome them. Wayne, could I add a little something to that too? Yep. Um, the system we're gonna be using will be similar to what we've done for holidays in the past for Christmas and Easter. And one of the things we do with that RSVP system is we set that number of RSVPs that look like it's full lower than our actual capacity. So that'll actually be built in. And one of the main reasons we do that is so that, you know, those of us who have the flexibility to do one or the other, if we see, you know, nine o'clock's filling up, we know then we could sign up for 11 because that helps the whole community. It helps the whole thing work together. Um, but then with that, I just wanted to make this point as well, because I think it's important for one of the first couple of questions we answered. The reason we're asking for RSVPs is primarily so that we can communicate with you 
should there be some kind of an outbreak. What we are not going to be doing with that information is sharing it with anyone else. So it is not our job to perform contact tracing for Olmstead County or the state of Minnesota, and we will not be doing that. Um, we, when we ask for information, we tell you that it's uh, for our uses only and we won't be sharing it with third parties and that includes any government agency. So um, that's just, just uh, I know there were some questions about that in some other formats as well and I just thought that was worth um, clarifying. So we just do that so we can say, hey, we did have somebody test positive and we wanted you to know and you need to take whatever steps you need to take, but we won't be um, sending that list to anybody else. Thanks for those additional comments, Brian. Those are helpful. So I think this is a great place as the questions are, are uh, winding down here to end. And, and Mary, I absolutely thank you for sharing that Romans 15, one through two, um, when we talk about regathering together and that there is still a uh, viral pandemic going on to remind as we are uh, taking a look at, you know, are we going to come to a service or are we gonna wear a mask or are we gonna uh, sing out loud uh, in regards to what's been requested of us um, as a church family is, you know, we who are strong ought to bear with the failings of the weak and not to please ourselves. Each of us should please his neighbor for his good to build him up. And that's the heart that we would really like to see guide Calvary as we're regathering together. Um, so as we're wrapping up here, I don't see any other questions coming in. I would invite uh, Andy Hoffman from our board to close us in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. That you're the same before COVID, during COVID, and after COVID. Pray that you would continue to lead us and guide us um, as a body of believers. God, that as we uh, increase our connections with one another as we begin to regather um, in the church building and at the gather outs and as we continue to move forward in our small groups, God, that you would protect us uh, physically, that you would help us to be wise uh, and discerning, God, that you would give us humble hearts and, and a spirit um, that seeks to honor others over ourselves. God, help us to, to, to be filled with love and grace uh, for those around us, uh, in our church body and in our city and, and around our state, God. Help us to be uh, quick to listen, slow to speak, uh, as we face just crazy times uh, with the, the global pandemic, um, uh, the the raci racial issues that are that are plaguing us in this country, um, the processes and things that we as a as a church body have been going through uh, through the transition process. God, we need you uh, more than ever, and we just pray that you would lead us and guide us, um, that we would honor you in all that we do. Help us to be the body, to be united, and to show and shine our light to the world around us. Uh, you are the answer to all of our questions. And everyone, whether they know it or not, uh, needs you uh, more than anything else, God. And so I just pray that you would empower us um, to, to share the gospel, to, to be the church, um, to be united, to stand together, uh, and to be a blessing to those around us. We thank you. We, we continue to pray for wisdom and guidance as we navigate these um, choppy waters, God, and just pray that you would, again, guide us through these each level as we move forward uh, and help us to, uh, to do so with, with wisdom um, and, and courage and love. And we thank, thank you for, for everything that you've done. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Thank you very much, um, Andy, and we will go ahead and bring the meeting to a close. We're looking forward to seeing more of you in person this upcoming Sunday and at the first gather out and throughout and July 10th and the rest of the year. 
but also engaging with others of you online or in your seed groups or your community groups that um, Calvary ministry is going to continue happening in many different forms. Um, and we're really looking forward to that. Thank you. Bye, everyone.